plans for me are good You hold my future You're working all the time You're the mountain mover From sunrise to sunset Till the sun comes back up again You're by my side to run the race, and, and not just a physical race, though many of us had the chance to do that on the 22nd um, as we raced for World Vision to help provide clean water to a bunch of people. And, and if you were there, I'm so glad. I know I saw some of you running and doing a lap and getting really hot and sweaty, but for a really great cause and community. And for those of you who weren't there, we miss you, but we hope to, to see you at some of our events upcoming. Um, but what we're really talking about right now is running the race of life, pursuing God, pursuing his way of doing life, which we know is good. Um, so this is our last week on that theme, and we're talking about practicing living for God and what does it mean to really live for God. Um, so we really get a great example of this in the New Testament, and that's going to be what our story is about today. So if you look at your Bibles, we're looking at the book of Mark, which is one of the Gospels in the New Testament. You hear a lot about Jesus um, and his time on earth. Um, and we're specifically looking at chapter 12. So setting a bit of background, Jesus and the disciples came to Jerusalem about a week before Passover. If you don't remember what Passover is, that's okay. Um, and basically, back in the Old Testament, there's a story about how God's people were enslaved in Egypt. They didn't have freedom. They had to work without pay. I mean, it was just a really horrible, backbreaking situation. And God provided them freedom. And one of the ways he did that is that there were a number of plagues that occurred, um, really bad things that happened to, to the Egyptians to help make them realize they needed to let God's people go. And the Passover is celebrating the fact that God passed over his people. God passed over the Jews. He didn't put that same um, punishment on the Jews. He instead preserved them because they followed God. He specifically asked them to put the, the blood of a lamb over their doors. Um, and so that's what kind of protected them from one of those plagues that, that occurred. 
So the Passover was a time of celebration. It was a time of celebrating that they received freedom, that they no longer were enslaved, um, of God protecting and preserving them. There would often be a feast that would occur. So Jesus comes to Jerusalem week before Passover, and the crowds are really excited to see him. At this point, Jesus is known for, for many of the things he's done, his teachings, his miracles, the way he's helped people. However, the religious leaders were not. So when we talk about the religious leaders in the Bible, often we talk about them as the scribes and the Pharisees. Um, and so Jesus gives a, a warning about them because he knew that they were, they were not for him, that they wanted all the attention of the people on them and not on Jesus, that they felt threatened by Jesus. Um, so in the, the book of Mark chapter 12, if we look at verse 38, he says, and this is Jesus talking, in his teaching, he said, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and like reading in marketplaces. And they have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at feasts, who devour widows' houses for a pretense, make long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. So what is Jesus saying here? Is he, he condemning people who are religious leaders? No, but specifically he's condemning what the scribes and the Pharisees at this point in time were doing. But it says when it talks about they, you know, had long robes and they liked greetings and they had these places of honor. What he's saying is they weren't following God because they wanted to follow God and serve people. They were following God so that they would get the honor and the respect and the riches of other people. So they were really manipulating the situation. And it says that they were devouring widows' houses. So they were actually exploiting the people who were poor and in need. Um, and trying to cover it up by saying these long prayers. So they weren't really loving God or following God. They were pretending to do that so they could get wealth and they could get power and they could get acclaim. And that goes against everything that Jesus stood for. Jesus is God. You know, he cared about his people. Um, he is the real deal. And these people were all pretend. So Jesus calls that out. So along his way in this time in Jerusalem, he stops at the temple. So if you think about the temple, for, for the Jews, this is very much like our churches. You know, when we go to church on Sundays um, or watch our Zoom sessions on, on Sundays. And so they go to the temple and they watch the place where people would make their donations. Um, so I don't know if you've heard of tithing, but a lot of us will tithe. We'll give a portion of the money we make back to God and back to the church. So that can be used to help people in need in the area. It can be used to help continue the work of the church. Um, so that's what it's kind of like what they're doing is, is they're giving these tithes to, to be able to give their money and say, hey, this is not mine, this is God's, and I'm gonna give a portion of it back to God. It's a really cool practice. And if you wanna know more about it, I'd be happy to talk to you guys about it. Um, but we have a very specific story here. So I'm going to read you from Mark chapter 12, verse 41. It says, and he, that's Jesus, sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums and a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins to make a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, truly, I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box, for they all contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. So this is really cool for a couple different reasons. Okay, so sometimes we don't have a lot to give. Um, especially when we're younger, we may not have all the wealth, all the riches to be able to give to God. And what Jesus is saying here is it's not that that matters. He cares about the heart. So this, this poor widow, um, she gives such a smaller portion of these rich people who had been giving large amounts of money. But Jesus knew she was giving out of a heart of trusting in God that she gave him actually everything she had to live on. She was putting her complete faith in God to provide for her. Another thing I want to highlight about this is, so again, it says she's a poor widow. So she doesn't have a lot of money and she's a widow. So a widow is someone who's, whose spouse has died. Um, and in this culture, in this time in history, to be a woman without a, a man um, was, was really challenging. It was, it was what would be called a patriarchy. So 
it was hard for a woman to live on her own. That might be partly why she's poor, or maybe she was poor long before her husband passed away. We don't know. But either way, you know, she's gone through hardship. It's not necessarily that she's had an easy life. And yet she knows to put her trust and her faith in God, and God honors that. Yes, it's wonderful that the rich people were able to give large amounts, but Jesus knew the heart of this woman and that what she gave was everything for her. So this is a really key example, guys, of what it means to live for God, to actually put your money where your mouth is and say, yeah, I'm giving it all to you. Now, it doesn't mean always that you have to give everything you have away, though the Bible talks a lot about generosity and the, the goodness of giving to God and to others. Again, tithing is one specific way of doing it. We talk a lot about giving 10% of what you've earned when we talk about tithes um, back to God, back to his people. But it can also be, you know, what are the things we treasure in life? What are the things that hold value for us? It might be money. It might be relationships. It might be um toys or free time or hobbies or talents that we have, how can we take those things that we really value in our life and give them fully to God? So that doesn't, again, it doesn't always mean donating. It could be using your talent in a way that honors God, you know, maybe singing worship songs to him, maybe helping other people um, because you can understand math really well and you're going to help other people to understand that. And that's a way of caring for others, which Jesus models for us. Um, there's a lot of ways to do that, and we can talk more about that on our, our Sunday check-in session at 940. I hope to see you guys there, but just be thinking about that. What are the things that you treasure? What are the things that hold value in your life, and how can you give them, whether physically or, or in the way you use them, to God? Um, so I'm just going to pray for us that we, we are empowered to do so. Dear Jesus, thank you so much that you see the heart Lord, you don't just judge by appearance, like with the scribes or the Pharisees who, who seemed so uh, religious and yet were really just using that to, to get power and to get acclaim. Um, that you could see through, you know, the, the small amount that this poor widow gives in Mark chapter 12 and see her heart and see that she's giving everything she has and honor that. Lord, help us to be more like this widow, Lord. Help us to, to see what we have and to willingly offer it to you because we trust you and we know your way is best. God, we love you. I ask that you help us to serve you and love you and love one another well this week. Amen. All right, guys. Again, hopefully I see you at the 940 activity today. Um, and I hope you have a great week. Bye.